Hello, my name is Liz and welcome to our closed loop step motor technology video. During this video, I'll introduce open loop systems, servo systems, and closed loop stepping motor systems. I'll discuss the theory, the advantages and considerations, as well as briefly introduce our products which feature the closed loop stepping motor technology. I'd like to begin with the stepping motor and servo motor system configuration. It consists of a start signal, in this example coming from a PLC, going to the controller. The controller then outputs pulse and direction signals to the driver, and the driver energizes the motor excitation, and the motor begins to rotate your load. Here we can see an example of the open loop stepping motor construction. It consists of a permanent magnet, two rotor cups, the ball bearings. You can have a single shaft motor or a double shaft motor as shown here, the windings, and the stator. Here we can see an open loop stepping motor system. It consists of the pulse generator, which sends pulses to the phase sequencer. The phase sequencer determines which phase is on or off and the FET energizes the motor phase excitation, and the motor begins to rotate. With an open loop system, there is no feedback. Therefore, the user doesn't know if the motor has made its commanded move. Alternatives to an open loop stepping motor system consist of, you can add an encoder to the back shaft of a double shaft motor. Here we can see two motors with an encoder mounted to the back shaft. An encoder is used to turn the open loop system into a closed loop system. An encoder helps to verify the position to know if the motor has made its commanded move. Another alternative is a servo system. And you can also consider a closed loop stepping motor system. Here we can see the advantages and considerations of an open loop system or adding an encoder to a stepping motor. Some advantages consist of it is a relatively simple system. It is relatively low in cost when compared to other positioning systems. It is a compact motor and the motor does make a complete stop. It's also a high response type system. By adding, a, by adding an encoder, to the double shaft motor, you do have position feedback. Some considerations to have if you do not have an encoder on your motor is if the motor is stalled, there's no way of the user knowing. Once you add an encoder to a double shaft motor, an additional pulse counter is needed to read the feedback, as well as programming is needed to correct the error if an error does occur. Here we can see an example of the servo system. The servo system is a closed loop system. Therefore, it does have positioning feedback. The servo system is basically an on or off type system. It compares the actual position to that of the desired position. For example, if you wanted your motor to go 10 revs and the feedback reads zero, the motor will turn on until the feedback reads 10 revs, then the motor will turn off. The response of the servo is based on your gain settings. Here we can see the same motion profile example, which is represented here by the red line, and we compare a low gain setting. With a low gain setting, we can see we added some delay to our motion profile. If we take that same motion profile and have a high gain setting, now we see that the motor has to overshoot and undershoot to accomplish this motion. Therefore, we've added some vibration to the system. Here we compare gain settings and changing of inertia. If the gain setting is the same, and we change the inertia value, here we can see now the motor has significantly overshot our motion profile. In this example, we've increased the gain setting to 30, 
And we can see if we decrease the inertia value, we can see now the motor is overshooting and undershooting significantly. This is also considered hunting. Here we compare a torque and speed curve. We see the speed, which is represented on the x-axis in RPM, and the torque represented in the y-axis in ounce inches. We can see the servo system represented here by the pink line has low starting torque, but is able to run out at higher speeds. Whereas the stepping motor represented here by the blue line has high starting torque, but as we increase speed, our torque decreases. These are characteristics of each. We can take a look at the servo system advantages and consideration. The servo system can achieve higher speeds. It is built with an encoder, so it is a closed-loop system, so you do have positioning feedback. It is also rated for continuous duty. Some considerations are the gain tuning. We can see the overall performance of the servo system is based on the gain value, and hunting when there is a change of inertia load. Alternatives to a servo motor is a closed-loop stepping motor system. The motors have a built-in rotor position detection sensor, also known as a resolver, which constantly monitors the motor's speed and rotation. The resolver is a rotary electrical transformer used for measuring degrees of rotation. The winding inductance varies according to the positional relationship between the rotor and the stator. This is the resolver output. Here are some highlighted benefits of a resolver over that of an encoder. The sensor signal cycle is the same as a motor torque cycle, allowing the direct detection of the torque angle. A small, thin structure can be designed. Heat resistance is enhanced in the absence of electrical components. And a high-resolution sensor can be manufactured at a lower cost. This is the AlphaStep closed-loop system. The alpha step driver has an input pulse counter. All the pulses that go to the drive are counted. The resolver feedback goes to the rotor position counter, and any deviation that is present gets sent to the deviation counter. Normally, the system runs in an open loop. We make torque vectors that the motor follows. If the deviation counter shows anything greater than one point plus or minus 1.8 degrees, the phase sequencer turns on the torque vector at the highest part of the torque displacement curve, generating the maximum amount of torque, which allows the, the rotor to go back into synchronism. If the motor is off by several steps, the phase sequencer can energize several torque vectors on the highest part of the torque displacement curve. The driver can handle this overload up to five seconds. If if it cannot bring the motor back into synchronism within the five seconds, the driver will alarm out, letting the user know. A feature of the alpha step system is that it corrects itself within the move, not at the end of the move like encoders. Here we can see an example of the torque bus displacement curve of one phase. We can see that it produces the maximum amount of torque at the 1.8 degrees. Here we can see the keep and step method, the KIS. Here we can see the torque vest displacement curve. Assuming this green dot to be our desired position, and here we've deviated out of the plus or minus 1.8 degrees. Therefore, 
the driver has to energize the highest part of the torque vector, which is at the plus or minus 1.8 degrees. And we can produce several torque vectors to put the motor back into synchronism. When selecting the proper motor, we have to also take into account the ratio of load, of load inertia to rotor inertia. Here we can see some general guidelines that we use for sizing. For fast moves, your load inertia to rotor inertia can be up to a 1 to 3 ratio. A standard sizing or for open loop systems, you can have a load inertia to rotor inertia of 1 to 10. And for an alpha step closed loop system, you can have a load inertia to rotor inertia be 1 to 30. Therefore, a closed loop system can handle more load inertia than that of an open loop system. Here we can see some closed loop stepping motor characteristics. The closed loop system does have position feedback. There's no gain tuning, so it can handle variable loads automatically. There's no hunting. It's completely stable at the stop position. It's able to handle more inertia load than that of the open loop system. There's no loss of synchronism because of the keep and step method, which the driver automatically corrects the move within the motion. And if it cannot correct the move within five seconds, it will alarm out, letting the user know. And it has higher performance capability due to the feedback. Here are some highlighted features of the Alpha Step. It utilizes a closed loop control to maintain positioning operation even during abrupt load fluctuations and accelerations. The resolver monitors the rotation. When an overload condition is detected, it closes the loop to instantaneously regain control. And if the overload condition continues, it will output an alarm signal, providing reliability. Here's a product overview of our alpha step motor types. We offer standard type motors, electromagnetic brake types, IP65 rated, our all-in-one ASX series, our continuous duty AR series, and we also offer geared options with taper hub, planetary, or harmonic gears. For more information on our Alpha Step motor types, please continue to watch our Alpha Step product videos. I'd like to thank you for watching our closed loop step motor technology video. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at our technical support line, 1-800-468-3982, or you can send us an email at techsupport at orientalmotor.com. My name is Liz and thank you for watching the video.